Hello, what's up my people? How are you? How was the weekend? I hope you had a great weekend. Did you have an outdoor activities with your families? Because this is the last days of summer. Enjoy it while it lasts. <laughs> no, me? No. I don't go anywhere. I'm indoors. I love staying indoors. <laughs> doing some thinking and reflection yeah mm -hmm. yeah call it what it is i am an introvert yeah, hello <laughs> okay so i hope you had a good time great time you know spend time with your family i mean family is everything that's you know especially in this west you know when there is never a time for anything we need to make time for our children because any stages of development that is past is past we can never get it back so no matter how busy we are especially on weekends we need to you know spend some significant time with our our children our growing children that is still in their stages of development so to see you again i know um not seeing you physically, but I'm seeing you through my heart, you know, because the most important thing is the heart connection, heart to heart connection, because that's what matters in every relationship, including my social media relationship with you. <laughs> well, actually, I want to continue uh, my, my last video, The Lost Descendants. Okay, and what I meant in that video, The Lost Descendants, is the children born to African immigrants in the West whatever country in the West, whether it is United States, United Kingdom, Canada, or Australia. So, but I'm not talking about these other countries because I don't live there. I don't know what's going on there, but they are basically the same anyway. So, um, I'm taught my perspective is from United States because that's where I've been living for 24 years. I think it's very important to continue talking about this, even though that my African people are not paying attention, but I'm going to continue to throw out these truths out there because I feel that I'm obligated, you know, as a person of African descent, as an African, you know, to tell them the truth, the, uh, the detailed truth about this place so they know what they are coming in for especially people of my country nigeria you know they are they have this default setting in i am suffering in nigeria and everywhere else is a kingdom of god oh america is a kingdom is a paradise next to the kingdom of next door to the kingdom of God. It is not. Uh, this world is all about struggling for everyone. Okay? So, stop thinking like that. Because this seems to be your, 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 your tunnel vision about the West. And you don't want to reason with anyone. These thoughts are irrational. It is nowhere close to what it is. So, this is why I will continue to, you know, bringing out these topics to your face. Because if not for anything, for your own children, okay, for your own children, because you are making some, you know, uh, unreasonable decision that is going to ruin your children when you finally come over here. So, that is why I think this is important. So, these children... That was born, that was born to African immigrants, you know. Sometimes I think about them. I cannot imagine what it feels for them, because look, they were born here. They are first generation Africans here. Okay, um, they are. They don't know anything. The African country that their parents were born. They are not fully accepted in the nation they were born. This is on, you know, non-verbal behavior. This is unspoken dynamic. No one is verbally telling them, oh, you are not accepted in here. No. So they are neither here or there. And their parents are not helping issues at all. And I want to challenge our Africans that is living in the United States. Have we learned anything from the Hispanics? From the Spanish-speaking people from the South, South American countries, have we learned a thing from them? I really admire how the Hispanics, how they are super protective of their language and of their culture, their traditions, 
unapologetically. I love the way they are preserving their, their culture and the way they are transmitting, uh, transmitting it to younger generations. Their children are taught their native language. Before even they get to five years, the age of kindergarten, they are very perfected and fluent in Spanish. They, at that point, they don't even understand English. Because if they only speak Spanish at home for them. So even before they even enroll in school, they don't speak English. And then the school system is going to say, oh, uh, they don't speak English. We're going to enroll them in, in English as a second language. You know, English, ESL, English as a second language is a class that they enroll, you know, children or adults that can speak English so they can learn to speak English to communicate before they even enroll them in the, um, in the main class. So they're going to say, oh, these Spanish children, they're going to enroll them in uh, English as a second language. You know, sometimes it, it goes, you know, uh, simultaneously with their main class. You know, they can be in a class with other children and they have, they can pull them out for English as a second language class from the main class. So, yeah. And they don't, the parents don't care. Oh, yeah, fine. Okay. Bottom line is that these kids will eventually learn English be very fluent, you know, speak in U.S. accent, and just about, you know, everyone else. So at the end of the day, they are fluent in Spanish and English. Awesome. And I'm saying bravo to Hispanics. Bravo. We Africans, something is wrong with us. We don't learn that. At all. I will tell you the Hispanics, you know, no English. Yeah? In the court, even in, in the government offices. They don't understand the English. They don't. They're speaking their language. Okay? If you want to talk to them, if you really want to communicate to them, get a translator. And they do get a translator for them. And now, Spanish is becoming, you know, an you know, an unofficial second language in America. This is how resilient these people are in preserving and holding up their culture. And their food, you know, uh, their music, their everything. I mean, when I go to my neighborhood park, like, you know, when they are doing their cookout, and I see even two, three, four year old dancing, like the dancing. I, I mean, I can't, I can't dance though, but do what they, they do like this. You know, so, but I can't dance. I'm not a good dancer. So, but I love Spanish music. You know, so, and their, their, um, their dance steps. So, I love it. So, I see children dancing. These are the children born in America. They are emerged into their native culture. And as a matter of fact, you cannot be able to tell a Spanish person that was born in America and the one that is immigrated in America, no difference except if they tell you. These people are awesome. Every ethnic minority in America need to take several pages out of their playbook. Because no matter how much we want to strip ourselves to belong to this culture, we never and never, we never ever going to fully belong. Because they're going to always put us in our space. Spanish people understand that. And they are standing their ground when it comes to their culture. When it comes to their language. Everything about them. This is what I call self-love. Self-love. They love who they are. They love, they value their tradition. And they want to make sure that they maintain it, preserve it, and transmit it to the next generation while living in the United States. So African people can tell me, oh, this is America. Please give me a break. The Spanish people are also living in America. 
we just need to start detoxing our brain from that 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 colonial and whatever mentality this is what is just the problem the colonial mentality we need to get rid of it to recognize who we are and to you know value ourselves and give us ourselves and our culture and wherever we are some values and begin to teach them to our children and actually the purpose of this um, series uh the lost descendant is to encourage african uh, african families and african parents to um, try to expose their children to African culture, to the African country where they were born. Not just, you know, teaching them because we already lost it. Because most of our children here cannot speak our native language, except very few of them. So, not just trying to teach them our culture here, we also need to be taking them home frequently. They need to understand, they need to actually have a relationship with those at homeland. Give them that opportunity so that in the future, if they think that America is not for them, then they can easily move to Africa. Look, my cousins, black Americans, whose you know, um, ancestors are our ancestors, siblings, who were brought here by force, not of their own making, most of them is moving back to African continent. They have everything here. But most of them are moving back to African continent. They got everything. But one thing that is not here is peace and freedom. So why are we African parents doing this to our, our children? We need to step up we need to pave that way for them in africa if you own a piece of land a plot of land show them make sure they know everything you got in africa you already made a way for them then why are you buying properties in africa if you don't intend that your children is going to return to Africa, you are just wasting your time because after you're done with that, then your nieces and your nephews and your cousins will inherit it for you while you have your own children. So it's time to start taking them home. They don't have to be this good that they know and understand your native country. So in the future, because believe me, Africa is the new frontier. Africa is a growing economy. Very soon, the world will be diverting to Africa. So, we don't know what's going to happen in 10 years from now, but you better start making a way for your children in Africa or teach them, you know, the, the, the culture, everything about your African country, everything that you have, so that in the future, when they become adults, they can choose where they want to be. They don't have to be in America. Many Americans don't live in America, okay? So if they choose to be in Africa, then you already made a way for them. You already paved the way for them. They can just grab their suitcase and move back to Africa because they already have relationship with families there. But we are not doing that. But anyway, my people... Thank you so much for stopping by today and thank you so much for your audience. I really appreciate you from the bottom of my heart. I really love you so much, okay? If you haven't subscribed, why not? Could you please subscribe um, and hit the notification bell, okay? We're going to be having a robust topic, you know, um, conversation in here, okay? Thank you and have a restful Sunday. And I'm wishing you a very um happy productive weekdays okay thank you bye